deserves a great round of applause. He's made it clear we are not alone in this fight. He is with us. He's been fantastic. And I was supposed to let Marvin Borelli do this, our political action president, but it gives me great pride. So I'm going to turn it over to our borough president, Ruben Diaz! Thank you, Jose. Are there any Brooksites in the house? Yeah. Are there any teachers in the house? Yeah. Are there any students in the house? Yeah. I just want to thank all of you for coming out. They told me a couple of minutes ago that there were quite a couple of people outside. I didn't expect this. But certainly there is an energy here. What's that? And I can appreciate the energy. But we're here, ladies and gentlemen, because there's an important and serious issue that we need to confront and that we need to talk about, right or wrong? We're here because we know that the Department of Education is making decisions on closing schools throughout the city of New York, seven schools in the Bronx. This, this decision affects thousands and thousands of our students, and we believe that they're making this decision too quickly, and we believe that they should stop in making that decision. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow, there's supposed to be a vote. Now, understand this. We're not just emotional. And I'm here with my partner in Borough Hall, Deputy Borough President Aurelia Green. We're not just emotional in our stance. We take this stance for a couple of reasons. And let me outline some of them here. And I'm sure that you're going to have principals and educators who will add on to the reasons why we are concerned here. First of all, the criteria that the DOE is posing for these closures are inconsistent. In many cases, these schools were deemed proficient in the quality review. And moreover, many of the schools did not even meet the criteria that they set for closing these schools in the first place. And we believe that those inconsistencies are a reason why the vote tomorrow should at the very least be delayed. We also believe that when a, a decision is made like this, that at the very least there should be a certain level of respect that the DOE should have of the principals, the teachers, the parents, and yes, the students, the stakeholders. There should be a conversation, there should be discussions, there should be a dialogue, and all of the stakeholders should be a part of that conversation. DOE decided not to do that. And that's the reason for the delayed vote. I know that this is a citywide issue. But here in the Bronx, and I'm proud to be the borough president, there's one issue that particularly concerns me. When you look at the special needs students, the schools that are being proposed for closing have a higher percentage of special needs students than in other areas here in the Bronx. There is no plan, ladies and gentlemen, for where these students are supposed to go, and there's certainly no plans that have been given to us addressing how are we gonna help these students and provide the services that they need. Moreover, and this is a statistic here that is mind-boggling, while the homeless population of, of students in the city of New York has gone up by 21%, 21% citywide, when you look at a report that was done and was put out by the Advocates for Children, and this is not a typo, 
in the schools in the Bronx of the, that are being proposed for closing, the same homeless population has increased by 580%. Ladies and gentlemen, the DOE has not given us a plan as to how they're gonna address this. They have not given us a budgetary analysis as to what are gonna be the ramifications of these closures. It is because of that reason that I will join tomorrow, and I have asked Anna Santos, my representative on the PEP, to vote with Brooklyn, to vote with Manhattan, to vote with Queens, to put out an, a, a, a suggestion that we should delay the closing of the schools at the very least. There are questions that need to be answered. There are more studies that need to be done. There are people who need to be listened to. Unfortunately, the city of New York, unfortunately, the chancellor and the Department of Education has decided not to choose that route. And that is what brings us here today. This is a serious issue. Once again, this is one that affects all of us, whether we're from the Bronx, Queens, Manhattan, Brooklyn, or Staten Island. Certainly for us here in the Bronx, there will be huge ramifications if we allow this to go through. And so we stand here while we're energetic, while we're ready for the good fight. We stand here because we're serious. We stand here because it is time that the mayor and the chancellor listen to us. We stand here because we're not just emotional. We stand here today because we know what we're talking about. And we deserve, at the very least, to be heard we deserve respect, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Chancellor, and the Department of Education. It's time that you start to respect all of the parents, all of the educators, all of the professionals, and yes, all of the students. We're no longer going to stand idly by, and we're here today with many individuals. And I would ask the Vice President of Vocational Tech, Mr. Sterling Robeson, to come down and share a few thoughts. Yeah.